بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن استنب السنة إلى يوم الدين In the name of Allah, the especially merciful, the entirely merciful. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon all of the prophets and the messengers, our prophet Muhammad, his family, his followers, companions, and all of those who follow this message until the day of judgment. We seek the help and guidance from Allah. We seek forgiveness and pardon for our mishaps and shortcomings. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah leaves to stray, none can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but God and that Muhammad is the messenger and servant of God. I'm speaking to you today on behalf of the CIOGC in this month of Ramadan uh, during the chronic reflections, the 30th year uh, anniversary of the CIOGC. We have now entered into the last third of the month of Ramadan and these 10 nights we are looking to devote ourselves, exert ourselves to challenge ourselves and to dedicate ourselves by immersing ourselves in the Quran even more so. We should all find a way to retreat ourselves from this dunya, to teach our children to retreat um, and to not be influenced by others or their ideas and actions, but just to dedicate this last 10 days of Ramadan into a quiet time, a quiet reflection of the words of God. Uh, today, I'm going to speak to you about the a big concept in the Quran, but it's from a very small ayah. The ayah is qad aflaha man tazakka, and the concept is the concept of purification. Qad aflaha man tazakka means surely or certainly the one who purifies is the one who will succeed. The word tazkiya is rooted in zakawa, or it means to increase, purify, grow, and have a good condition of something. And qad, the way the ayah begins, is a harth taqiq. It means certainty, for sure. Allah has made an absolute promise to us. Falaha, or success, is rooted in the meaning of cultivation, prospering, or growth. We do say that Allah Azzawajal has been our prescriber, and He has prescribed fasting to us as it has been prescribed before. But He also is our provider, and He has provided for us a method which to fast, and that is the month of Ramadan a method in which we immerse ourselves in Qur'an, the month of Qur'an. And so this month is a month of purification because the Qur'an has been made as a purifier for us. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, prayed for his soul to have taqwa and to purify it. The exegetes, the mufasir of the Qur'an, have argued that the whole purpose of the Qur'an is for purification process or Tazkiyya. So the month of Ramadan is the month of Quran, and then it is truly our opportunity to purify ourselves, to uh, strengthen ourselves, and to uh, reflect and grow from who we are today and who we can become in the future. We all know that stress is the number one reason for illness and disease. Then Ramadan is our resilience because it creates for us a short, uh, difference in our daily routines, um, a, a time period in which we sort of stress ourselves to be a little bit different. And so really Ramadan is also a healing process for us. But how, how, how do we move from our current state to a desired state? What does that path in between the transition of current state to desired state look like? There are all sorts of management techniques and tools like uh, management by objectives or, or objectives and key results. And even there is the idea of 40 days to change. It's a 20 day breaking away and a 20 day to sol solidify a new growth or new habit. Then there's this new criteria or a criteria it's time tested. It's called the SMART criteria. The first is specific that we need to properly identify. My father always told me when I was a child that if we could properly identify our problem, really give it a name, know exactly what's causing it, where it's coming from, then we're literally more than halfway to solving our problem. 
most of us experience trouble because we don't identify the problem. We just know something's wrong. And then we sort of misstep our way trying to fix what's wrong. And if we just took the time to properly identify, identify our issue or the problem or the bad habit that we have, look at what's causing it, then we're really well on our way to solving it. The second part of the SMART criteria is M, measurable. It is about measuring or tracking our habits, tracking what we would like to be uh, ha ha see happen, what we want to change, what we want to grow into. And so we maybe uh, create little charts or lists for us to track. The third part of the SMART criteria is it is that our goal should be attainable. A path of least resistance going from our current state to our desired state, that pathway can be a path that we challenge ourselves and stress ourselves too much. And we have to be very careful about that. And we're looking for the path of least resistance because with a challenging path, we may fail. Then we're more likely to give up. If it is a path of least resistance, then we're more likely to succeed and feel good about ourselves and move forward. The fourth part of the SMART criteria is that it needs to be relevant, that it should correspond to other parts of our lives that have other goals in it, and that it is really part and parcel of a holistic building block. When we um, try to solve a puzzle, for example, we tend to migrate to the borders first to sort of seal up what it is that we want to do. And if it's a, a mountain scene, for example, maybe we try to put the sky together first and then maybe parts of the snow-capped mountains or, or maybe we begin at the, the grassy baseline of the puzzle. So we really try to uh, sort of segment our, our um, attempts to solve the problem problem to solve the puzzle. And so uh, the final part of the SMART criteria is to look at it being time-based, uh, that it is giving us an opportunity to, we have a timetable that we are going to stop, we're going to be able to evaluate what we've been able to do. And that is really what helps us solidify. So please remember the SMART criteria, um, specific measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-oriented. Because that part of planning is so essential for us to find change and growth, that reformation process in the concept of Tesquia, the, the removing of the, the bad or the old, and really seeing growth, that age-old planning process is so important to us because if you have heard this before, and perhaps if you fail to plan, you've planned to fail. And we don't want to see Ramadan being part of that unplanned part of our life, that, that, that sort of time where we get to come back to it year after year and see ourselves grow and develop. Um, Ramadan truly does have its seasons, and Ramadan itself comes in, in different times of the year. Uh, the lunar calendar is not aligned with the four seasons. It progresses in a way where it's pulling back. It, it seems as if it's coming earlier and earlier every year. And so when Ramadan is in the summer, we see it as a time for toil and struggling, and, and maybe it's a, an opportunity for us to really strengthen ourselves and bring about prosperity. And then when Ramadan is in the fall, it could be seen as like a shedding of habits, a, a removing of the bad things and replacing them with good things. The winter might be seen as a hunkering down with the Quran, you know, sort of that hibernation, just pulling ourselves in, we're really, really removing ourselves from the dunya. And like this year, spring, it's a time for renewal, it's a time for blossoming, it's a time to really grow and develop ourselves. So Ramadan should and can be reflected in the seasons. Um, it can be seen as a, a, a different opportunity at different times and stages within our life because change is a process. It is cyclical. We, we observe our objectives. We set forth our, our um, 
our ideas that we want to reach, our attainable ideas. And then we move through this, hopefully to maintain that new habit or that new growth and, and move on. But sometimes we might relapse. And if we relapse, in that case, it's just a, a matter of starting the, the cycle over again and maybe making some adjustments to it. Finally, um, as the, the ayah goes, Kadaf one will succeed who purifies. That success that we're looking at truly is the success of, of paradise being offered, Jannat al Firdaus, that we will only have to be trying to make ourselves better, not even perfecting ourselves, but bringing ourselves from a believer, a Muslim, to a mu'min, somebody with deep faith, to a Muslim, somebody who has reformed and developed themselves. And that this Ramadan, um, I'd like to ask, be a time for you and yours and our whole ummah to succeed and prosper and become stronger and better than even we thought we could. Teskiyah is also a collective effort so that we may be guided together to bring about only positive change. It's been my pleasure to be here with you today. Assalamu alaikum.